Professor Hoot's Luminous Adventure. Once upon a time, in the heart of the ancient Whispering Woods, there lived an owl named Professor Hoot. Unlike the other owls who spent their nights hunting and hooting, Professor Hoot was a scientist. He was endlessly curious about the world, always tinkering, testing, and taking notes. His laboratory was nestled high in the gnarled branches of a majestic oak tree, filled with flasks of bubbling liquids, piles of books, and intricate devices for gazing at the stars. Professor Hoot had a great ambition, to see the world during the daylight as clearly as he did at night. He pondered, if I could study the world under the sun as well as the moon, imagine what wonders I could discover. One crisp evening, with the moon a thin crescent in the starlit sky, Professor Hoot decided to concoct a potion to enhance his daytime vision. He meticulously mixed ingredients, nightshade dew, a feather from a diurnal hawk, and a sliver of sunlight captured in a crystal. As he mixed these ingredients, he recited an old recipe from a dusty tome believed to grant the wisdom of both sun and moon. However, engrossed in his work, he didn't notice his tail feathers inadvertently dipping into the cauldron. A magical reaction started as soon as his feathers touched the brew. Fizzle, sizzle, pop. The potion wasn't just bubbling. It was changing color from a deep midnight blue to a glowing vibrant azure. Startled, Professor Hoot backed away, but not before his tail absorbed some of the potion. Within moments, his tail began to emit a soft blue glow. At first, he was dismayed, lamenting his clumsiness. But then, curiosity overcame his frustration. Well, this wasn't the plan, but let's see what this glow can do, he thought. That night, as he ventured into the woods, something marvelous happened. His bright blue tail illuminated his path, attracting a parade of nocturnal creatures. Moths, foxes, and even a timid hedgehog came close, drawn by the unusual light. Seeing an opportunity, Professor Hoot decided to turn his accidental discovery into a learning moment. Gather around, dear friends, he announced, his voice echoing softly through the trees. He started to teach the gathered animals about the stars above, using his glowing tail to point out constellations and planets. Word spread quickly through the forest about the nightly gatherings, and soon creatures from neighboring areas began to attend. Night after night, Professor Hoot taught them about astronomy, the properties of different plants, and the mysteries of the forest. Over time, Professor Hoot realized that his failed experiment had given him a unique gift, not the one he intended, but perhaps one that was much needed. He became a beacon of knowledge in the forest, connecting with many animals he would have never met otherwise. As seasons changed, Professor Hoot continued his experiments, always eager for new discoveries and adventures. His glowing tail, once a source of embarrassment, had become his trademark, a symbol of serendipity and the joy of unexpected outcomes. Thus, Professor Hoot learned an invaluable lesson. Sometimes the best discoveries come from the unexpected twists and turns of our endeavors. And with each glowing night, the whispering woods became a little brighter and a lot wiser, all thanks to a scientist owl with a luminous tail. And so, beneath the twinkling stars and the watchful eyes of the old oak tree, life in whispering woods carried on, enriched by the glow of curiosity and the warmth of shared knowledge. The end. Title, Professor Hoot and the Comet Conundrum. One crisp, clear night in the whispering woods, as Professor Hoot sat atop his favorite oak tree, his keen eyes spotted a streak of light across the sky, a comet. Fascinated, he immediately set his mind to study this celestial visitor. He knew comets were rare, and this might be his only chance to uncover their secrets. The next evening, Professor Hoot gathered his astronomical charts, a telescope, and his notepad. He was determined to observe the comet's path and perhaps discover the elements that composed its glowing tail. Tonight, I shall unlock the mysteries of the stars, he declared with a twinkle in his eye. However, as he was adjusting his telescope, a sudden gust of wind blew through the forest, scattering his notes and charts all over the woods. Professor Hoot flapped his wings in dismay. Oh, what a disaster! My research, gone with the wind. Determined not to give up? Professor Hoot set out to retrieve his scattered notes. As he flew beneath the moonlit sky, his glowing blue tail illuminated the ground below, helping him spot his papers. But as he chased after a particularly elusive page, he stumbled upon a gathering of forest animals, all staring up at the sky in wonder. Curious, he approached them and asked, 
what captivates your gaze so intently this night? We're watching the comet, exclaimed a young rabbit. It's so bright and beautiful, but we don't know what it is. Professor Hoot, seeing another teachable moment, gathered the animals around. A comet is a celestial object that orbits the sun, made of ice, dust, and gases. When it gets close to the sun, it heats up and the gases escape, creating the glowing tail you see. The animals were fascinated, and Professor Hoot took this opportunity to turn the evening into an impromptu lesson on astronomy. Using his glowing tail to point to various features in the sky, he explained the orbits of comets, the phases of the moon, and the constellations. As the night deepened, a brilliant idea struck Professor Hoot. Why not make this a grand viewing party, he suggested. Let's all watch the comet's journey together. The animals were thrilled with the idea. Professor Hoot quickly forgot about his lost notes as he focused on setting up his telescope for everyone to use. One by one, the animals took turns peering through the telescope, gasping in delight at the close-up view of the comet's brilliant core and trailing debris. The night turned into a festival of stars. Foxes, deer, badgers, and birds all shared in the joy of discovery, their eyes wide with wonder. Professor Hoot felt a warm glow in his heart, realizing that sometimes the best adventures come from the unexpected turns in our plans. As dawn approached and the comet faded from view, the animals thanked Professor Hoot for the unforgettable experience. They had not only seen a comet, but had learned the joys of curiosity and discovery. Professor Hoot watched the sun rise, feeling content and eager for his next adventure. He had learned that even a scattered stack of notes could lead to a night of shared wonder and new friendships. And as the first rays of sunlight pierced through the trees of Whispering Woods, the forest was alive with the buzz of creatures chatting about the stars, all thanks to a wise old owl with a glowing tail. The End Title, Professor Hoot and the Echoing Enigma One tranquil evening, as Professor Hoot was adjusting the lenses of his telescope to gaze upon the distant nebulas, a peculiar sound rippled through the Whispering Woods. It was an echo unlike anything he had ever heard before, a series of melodious chimes that seemed to vibrate with a mysterious pattern. Intrigued, Professor Hoot set aside his astronomical pursuits for the night and decided to investigate this auditory anomaly. An echo with a melody? Now that's a riddle worth solving, he exclaimed, his eyes sparkling with curiosity. He flew towards the source of the sound, navigating through the dense foliage with his glowing blue tail illuminating the path. The sound led him to a hidden glen where the echo seemed to bounce off the ancient trees in a harmonious symphony. As he landed softly on a branch, he noticed several animals gathered below, each one listening intently to the echoes. Good evening, friends, hooted Professor Hoot. Have you also come to uncover the source of this enchanting sound? Yes, replied a wise old tortoise. It's unlike anything we've ever heard in the forest. It's as if the trees themselves are singing. Professor Hoot nodded thoughtfully and began his investigation. He first hypothesized that perhaps the wind was causing the trees to sway, creating the melodious sounds. However, upon closer examination, there was no breeze that evening. He then considered the possibility of a hidden creature, but none known to the forest could produce such a tune. Determined to solve the mystery, Professor Hoot decided to use a series of experiments involving sound waves and their reflections. He flew up high and hooted loudly, listening as his calls echoed through the forest. By measuring the time it took for the echoes to return and their intensity, he could determine where they were strongest and perhaps find the source. As the night progressed, Professor Hoot meticulously mapped out the echoes, his face a mask of concentration. The animals watched in awe, whispering among themselves about the wise owl's methods. Finally, after much analysis and a few more hoots, Professor Hoot discovered something astonishing. The echo was not caused by the wind or a creature, but by a peculiar rock formation near the glen, shaped in such a way that it amplified and modulated the sounds passing through it. The melody was simply the normal sounds of the forest, rustling leaves, a distant waterfall, even their own voices, reflected and transformed by the rocks. Ah, my friends, Professor Hoot announced, we've discovered a natural amplifier right here in our forest. This rock formation is a magnificent orchestra conductor turning our everyday sounds into music. 
the animals were delighted by the discovery. Inspired by the natural beauty of their musical glen, they began to visit it regularly, enjoying the symphony of nature amplified by the rock. Professor Hoot, pleased with solving the mystery, incorporated the echoing enigma into his teachings, showing young forest creatures the wonders of science in nature. And so, under the starlit sky and the canopy of the whispering woods, the echo continued to chime, a reminder of the mysteries hidden in plain sight, waiting to be uncovered by those curious enough to seek them out. The End Title, Professor Hoot and the Midnight Meteor One starry night, as Professor Hoot perched atop his ancient oak tree, a dazzling light streaked across the sky, a brilliant meteor that left a shimmering trail of dust in its wake. Professor Hoot, always eager for a new scientific pursuit, was thrilled. A meteor. Perhaps it's landed nearby. What a splendid opportunity to study a meteorite, he exclaimed with excitement. With his trusty notebook and a small satchel of tools, Professor Hoot set off under the cover of darkness, his glowing blue tail a beacon in the shadowy forest. He calculated the trajectory of the meteor using his knowledge of physics and the position of the stars, determining that it likely fell in the dense part of the forest known as the Thicket of Whispers. As he ventured deeper into the woods, the underbrush became thicker and the night sounds louder. Small creatures of the night paused and watched curiously as the illuminated owl fluttered by, his focus fixed on finding the celestial stone. Finally, after navigating through tangled branches and mossy stones, Professor Hoot arrived at a small clearing. In the center lay a smoldering rock, fragments of it glowing with a faint otherworldly light. Eureka, the meteorite, he hooted softly, careful not to disturb the sleeping creatures nearby. With gentle care, Professor Hoot examined the meteorite. He took samples of the rock and the surrounding soil, noting the changes the meteorite had caused to the environment. As he worked, he explained aloud for any curious night dwellers. Meteorites can teach us so much about our solar system. They are travelers from distant parts of our galaxy, carrying secrets of the universe. Suddenly, a rustling in the bushes caught his attention. A group of young fox cubs, drawn by the glow and the owl's soft voice, peeked out curiously. Seeing an opportunity for an impromptu lesson, Professor Hoot welcomed them. Would you like to learn about this visitor from space? He asked with a gentle smile. The cubs nodded eagerly, and Professor Hoot spent the rest of the night teaching them about space, meteors, and the importance of preserving our natural world even when exploring it. He showed them how to use a magnifying glass to look at the rock's surface and shared stories of the solar system. As dawn approached, Professor Hoot wrapped up his lesson. The fox cubs, now sleepy but wiser about the cosmos, thanked him and scampered back to their den. Professor Hoot packed up his tools, satisfied with his findings and the unexpected teaching moment. He returned to his oak tree laboratory just as the first rays of the sun touched the horizon. He knew that the meteorite samples would keep him busy for days to come, providing valuable insights into the universe beyond. Thus, another adventure concluded for Professor Hoot, marked by new knowledge, shared learning, and the quiet joy of a night spent under the stars. The End Title, Professor Hoot and the Vanishing River One morning, after a night spent stargazing, Professor Hoot was startled by an urgent knock at his tree lab. It was Patty the Porcupine, breathless and worried. Professor Hoot, the silver stream, it's gone, she exclaimed. This stream was the lifeblood of the Whispering Woods, and its sudden disappearance was alarming news indeed. Professor Hoot, ever the curious and calm scientist, gathered his maps and scientific instruments, preparing for an investigation. Let's take a closer look, Patty. A river doesn't just vanish overnight without a reason, he declared, his mind racing through the possible scientific explanations. Together, they headed to where the silver stream once bubbled and flowed. To their astonishment, they found the riverbed completely dry, with fish flopping helplessly and plants wilting. Professor Hoot immediately sprang into action, helping Patty rescue the stranded fish by relocating them to a nearby pond. With the immediate crisis under control, Professor Hoot began his scientific investigation. He examined the soil, tested the water residue for pollutants, and observed the surrounding landscape. There must be a logical explanation for this, he muttered as he worked. 
His investigation led him upstream, where he discovered something startling. A large beaver dam had recently been constructed, which was blocking the water from flowing down to the Whispering Woods. The beavers, busy as they were, had not realized the impact of their new home on the forest ecosystem. Realizing diplomacy was needed, Professor Hoot approached the beaver's lodge. With his natural wisdom and gentle demeanor, he explained the situation to Benny Beaver, the colony's chief. Your impressive dam has inadvertently caused a drought downstream, Professor Hoot explained, showing Benny the dry riverbed and the suffering wildlife. Benny was taken aback, having no intention of harming the forest or its inhabitants. Oh no, we didn't realize. Let's fix this together, he agreed readily. Professor Hoot, Benny Beaver, and a team of other forest creatures worked together to modify the dam. They created a spillway, which allowed just enough water to continue downstream, ensuring the river's flow was restored without dismantling the beaver's home. After a day's hard work, the water began trickling back into the silver stream, gradually filling it back up. The forest residents cheered as life returned to normal, with the river once again singing its melodious, watery song. As a token of thanks and newfound friendship, Benny invited Professor Hoot and all the helpers to a feast at the Beaver Lodge. That night, under the soft glow of Professor Hoot's luminescent tail, the forest creatures celebrated their collective effort and the restored harmony of their home. Professor Hoot returned to his oak tree lab, heart full and mind buzzing with ideas for his next lecture on ecosystem interdependence and sustainable solutions. Once more, the Whispering Woods was peaceful, all thanks to the wisdom and teamwork of its inhabitants. The end.